Today I'm going to show you how to create a realistic t-shirt mock-up in Corel Draw. Let's get started. Hey everybody, so today I'm going to teach you how to create this t-shirt mock-up in Corel Draw. I'm using Corel Draw X8, but any recent version should work. So the first thing you're going to do is open up the image of your shirt and we're going to adjust it a little bit. So click on the shirt. We're going to go to bitmaps to mode and we're going to change it to a grayscale image. Next we're going to go to effects to adjust and contrast enhancement. And I'm just going to hit reset right here. And we're going to adjust this gamma adjustment right here. And probably about 0.55 is going to work on this image. But you'll just have to try different things on your image to see what's going to work the best. Alright, I think I'm going to lower that just a little bit more. Maybe 0.52. That's a little bit too much. So, yeah, I guess we'll do that. 0.52. And we'll just hit OK. And you don't want to get it too dark. But if you do get it a little too dark when you apply it to your shirt you can always adjust the opacity a little bit so I think we'll be okay with that. So the next thing we're going to do is grab our pen tool and we're going to create a clipping path around the edge of the shirt so we can get rid of these kind of jaggedy edges. So I'm going to blow this up, pen tool, and we're going to start drawing. And we'll just trace all the way around the edge of the shirt. And I think to save time, instead of you watching me draw this whole thing around the shirt, I've gone ahead and drawn it ahead of time. And I'm just going to go ahead and turn that on now. Okay, as you can see here, I've got this clipping path drawn all the way around the shirt. We can blow it up a little bit. And uh, I'll go around the shirt so you can see I've got it just inside the edge of the shirt. Just so I can uh, get rid of the edge, the little jagged edges. If there's like a little black line or something around there, we can get rid of that. But you can see I've got it all the way around, just inside the edge of the shirt. All right, so I'm going to zoom back out. I'm going to grab the pick tool here. I'm going to click on my shirt, and I'm going to click on that outline that we drew. So you can see over in the layers, I've got both of those selected. And with both of those selected, come up here to the toolbar, and we're going to click on Intersect. So what that does is cut out a copy of the shirt. Now we can delete this original image, because we don't need that anymore. Now we just have the cutout of our shirt and we have the clipping path that we drew. Let me select both of those and scale it down just a little bit so it fits on the page. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is select this clipping path that we drew and we're going to right click on it, order, and I'm going to send it to the back of the page. Now I've got my shirt. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to call it Shadow 1. I'm going to create a duplicate of the shirt. I'm going to go to Edit and duplicate or you can press Control D on your keyboard to make a duplicate and I'm going to drag that duplicate up to that shadow one layer and I'm going to turn that off for a minute. I'm going to right click on the first layer and I'm going to rename it shadow two. I'm going to come back down here and make another layer and I'm going to name that one color layer. I'm going to drag it all the way down here to the bottom I'm going to drag it down here below the shadow 2 layer. Alright, and then on this color layer, we're going to move our curve to the color layer. So that way we're going to use that curve to add our color for our shirt. Now we're going to create one more layer, and we're going to name that Artwork. Logo. So that's where you're going to put your artwork when you import it. We're going to move that between the two shadows. Okay, so now we need to go in and set up each layer. In the shadow one, we're going to click on the bitmap, go to transparency, come up here and change that to uniform. And then here in normal, we're going to change that to multiply. And then we're just going to switch that to zero. And we're going to click on shadow two, the bitmap. And we're going to do the same thing, transparency, uniform, multiply and just change that to zero. All right, and you can see our shirt is pretty dark. If you're using this mock-up as a white shirt, you can always adjust the transparency on both of those shadow layers to lighten up the shadows a little bit. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna do is set up our color layer. So we we'll click on the curve, and you'll see there's like a black outline here, so we wanna right-click on the white square with the X, 
to get rid of that stroke. And now we can come here and pick a color for our shirt. I'm just going to pick a blue color. And when I select the blue color, it should have changed the shirt to blue, but it didn't. So probably what happened was when we were drawing the outline for the clipping path, um, we didn't get the nodes, all the nodes connected. So if this is an open path in Corel Draw, it will not fill with a color. So with this curve selected, what we want to do is go to our Join Curves palette. And if you don't have that open, you can go to Window, Dockers, and then open Join Curves right here. And I've got this set on Extend, meaning that if there's a gap between two nodes, that it will go ahead and fill that in. And if you click this and you still can't see the color, you can change the gap tolerance a little bit. You can raise it so it'll span a bigger distance. So I'm just going to leave it at 0.1. I'm going to hit apply. And there's our shirt color. So obviously we didn't have this path closed. We had just had two nodes that weren't quite connected. So now everything is connected. I'm going to go back to my layers menu here. So the shadow layers, I'm going to lock those so that we don't move those around. And now what I want to do is bring in my artwork. Okay, so I've got my two logos right here. Since we're doing a blue shirt, I'm going to go ahead and use the white logo right here. I'm going to drop that on there. I'm going to adjust that a little bit. And you can see I've got those on. These are on my color layer, but I want them on my artwork layer. So I'm just going to grab both of those. I'm just going to drag those up to the artwork layer, drop those in, and there you have it. If you want the shadows to be lighter, you can always click on that layer. You have to unlock it and you can lower the opacity a little bit. Come back here to transparency, up here by multiply and we'll just lower that. That way it'll lighten it up some. You can also lower the opacity on the other shadow layer, but that way it gives you more control when you have a different colors. You may need to make the shadows darker. Sometimes you may need to make them lighter, but that way you've got more control over how the shadows look. So I'm just going to leave this set on zero for right now. All right, so one more thing I want to do is I want to create a color for this tag because to me, since the tag is the same color as the shirt, it just makes it look fake. So what we're going to do is we're going to blow this up a little bit, grab our pen tool, and we're just going to draw around that tag. I'm going to adjust that just a little bit. All right, so now I'm going to try to fill that with a color. First of all, I'm going to right click on the white square with the X to get rid of the outline. Then I'm going to come down here to my grays. I'm just going to click about a 40 or 50% gray to fill that with. And you'll see it drew that in my shadows layer. So I'm just going to grab that and drag that down to my color layer just right above there. And now you can see it adds some color to the tag so it doesn't match the shirt and it looks, you know, a little more real. And we could name these. We can like right click on that, come down to rename, let's call that tag. Click on this one, rename that. Shirt color. Whoops, if I can spell. All right. And then you can always name these if you want. But since these are images you're just bringing in, you know, you can name them or you don't have to name them because you're probably only going to bring one logo in at a time. So it doesn't really matter. All right. So now let's say you want to use the color logo. So I'm just going to come over here. I'm just going to hide that logo right there. I want to click on the color one, drag that over, and you'll see that you can see that grain in the shirt. So it just makes it look a little more realistic. I'm going to scale that down. I'm going to lock that top shadow layer back. So when I grab that, I won't grab the shadow layer. And I'll just fit that where I want it. And let's say we want to do this like on a white or a gray shirt. Click on the color. We'll come over here to gray. We can do that. If we don't want the tag to match, we can click on the tag. Change that to more of a white color or a silver color. Just so it stands out a little bit more. And again, you can come over here to these shadow layers and you can adjust that using the transparency tool if you need to. I'm gonna change the color of the shirt to white and you can see it just looks really dingy. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust these so the shirt's a little more white. And I'm gonna come down to this other one. I'm gonna adjust it a little bit. And it looks a lot better. But you can play around with the different blend modes 
and you can play around with the different settings and just kind of get the color the way you want it to look. Uh, another thing you can do is, since this is on a white shirt, you could click on that logo. And if you want to get rid of the white, just click that, go to transparency, leave it on this. Don't, don't click on the uniform, just leave it on this mode. Just change that to multiply and you'll see it gets rid of the white. So you see the shirt shining through and then you can see like the texture in that logo. If you change this to uniform, then it fades it. So it's better just to leave it here and just change the mode. So I guess that's about it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something new. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them in the comments section below. If you like this video, please share it and subscribe to my channel. Also make sure you click the little bell icon to turn on notifications so that you'll know when I upload a new video. And if you want to follow me on social media, all the links are in the description below. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you later.